me who, what drew me to that and um, maybe show a couple of pictures, but mostly I'm just gonna um, you know, talk here and then make sure to leave plenty of time for, for questions. And I'd also like uh, Neil to talk a little bit later about your perspective too um, on your work with the mustard seed. So um, first, our mission really is all about supporting seniors. And the, and the heart of that mission is to support seniors to age in place safely in their homes and in their community. The, um, the original vision um, uh, for the Mustard Seed Project, and this is uh, Edie Morgan, is the founder of, of the Mustard Seed. And she saw the need um, you know, to support, she wanted it for herself and for her community to support seniors to you know, stay in their homes if that's what they wanted, as opposed to go somewhere else for care as they got older. And um, part of that long-term vision was to build um, supportive housing on the Key Peninsula, which has not existed in the past. Um, so it's really all about that and, and the, the programs that we have um, support that. So for example, transportation programs, transportation on the Key Peninsula is a real challenge, especially for seniors. So we have a, a Catholic Community Services Medical Rides uh, program, they, they support that program for us. We also have a Pierce Transit bus um, and we're, we're in the future down the road here, we've just gotten funding for uh, two of our own buses as well. So transportation is a, is a key thing. Um, classes at our um, senior center in Key Center called the Crandall Center. So yoga, um, uh, Tai Chi, and SAIL, which is Stay Active and Independent for Life. So basically, you know, exercise programs that are easy entry and designed to help older folks stay, stay as fit as possible. Um, we also have a, a range of programs to help people, you know, to stay in their homes. So home repairs, we have volunteers who go out and fix the eave spouts or plumbing, you know, those kinds of things, um, visits. And then uh, one of the things that we've done a lot more of during the pandemic, because it's, we haven't been able to go inside the houses as much is yard cleanup. You know, yards can really easily get out of, get out of hand for um, seniors. They can't do it themselves. So we have done a lot of work to send in our staff and volunteer crews to get yards cleaned up and back in shape for, for older folks. That's been a big thing. And that's been actually something that a lot of uh, volunteer groups have helped us with, um, including the Rotary Clubs in Gig Harbor and several local churches have put together work parties for those. Um, we also have a information and referral program. That's what Neil, one of the things that Neil does with us, um, our key senior information center, you know, because as you get older, um, you need, different information to figure out how to navigate different resources. And so our Kasich desk is all about guiding people um, to those, to the information and the resources that they need. Um, we work really closely actually with the um, a Aging Disability and Resource Center um, of Pierce County, which is basically the, our version of the Area Agency on Aging. Um, in fact, just last week, we had a great meeting with them about all the programs they do. and we kind of overlap and refer people to them and they refer people to us. So that's, that's great. Um, we've also done um, during the pandemic and Neil has, has done a lot of this himself too. He's been our star volunteer to deliver meals to people. Um, Key, Penin Key Peninsula Community Services is another agency um, on the key that actually has a congregate meal program, but they had to, you know, uh, suspend that for, actually people coming in during the pandemic. So we, we delivered meals and um, Neil and other volunteers of ours helped um, with that. Um, we also, I was talking to George beforehand, you know, this is a really great program you have where you can do this virtually. We, we were forced to get creative too and figure out different ways to, to stay connected with people during the pandemic. And we started up um, our community forums um, and they're doing those every two weeks online. Um, those will be, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about those later and how you can find out more about them. Also just posted a lot of videos, people telling stories, um, just various things to stay connected with people. Um, and also worked very closely with uh, Tacoma Pierce County Health Department to help get um, PPE out to people, um, We've had several vaccination clinics that we've helped with and some at our center. Um, 
and also now are doing mammogram clinics and things like that. So we've kind of built relationships or strengthened relationships that um, were not as strong before the pandemic during this difficult time. So there've been some uh, silver linings. Um, also during this time, we've been able to really move our assisted living and memory care um, project forward, um, which has been many years in the making. As I said, that was part of the original vision um, that Edie Morgan had was to provide some supportive housing on the key peninsula so that, you know, people, if they do get to the point of not simply not being able to stay in their homes because they need more supportive care than they can get in their home. Um, what has happened in the past is that people on the key peninsula have had to go outside the community to get that care. And that's led to a lot of sad stories where people have become disconnected from the community that really is their support system. So um, we're, we'll be opening um, this fall, and I'll show you some pictures later of the project. It's really exciting to, that this long-term vision is actually coming into reality. Um, we've been able to fund it um, thanks to the USDA and their Rural Development uh, Community Facilities Program. Um, not easy to qualify for that, and it's not easy to jump through all the hoops, but um, we did it and um, are grateful to be under construction for 30 um, beds. It'll be three different homes, um, two assisted living, one memory care um, in Key Center. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, later in some of the details. But um, back to the what drew me to the Mustard Seed Project, it really, well, I've always had a very um, soft spot for older people since I was a kid. I've liked to, to um, hang out with older people and I've always been curious to hear their stories. And um, it, the, the, the thing that really, um, I had sort of a, trans, uh, uh, a formative experience when I was 10 years old. I, so I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, I was saying to George, if you've listened to Prairie Home Companion, you know, Garrison Keeler, which um, it's kind of, kind, of, kind of like that. It was like Lake Wobegon is where I grew up. And um, when I was 10, my great grandma Miller, um, she was 95 at the time, um, had a fall um, and then ended up having to go to, she'd been very independent up to that point um, and then had to go to a nursing home. So my grandparents and my mom and I went to visit her and I'll never forget it because it was, um, it was just a, horrible place. I mean, it didn't smell good. It was, uh, she had a roommate who was having real psychological problems. It was, it was just, you know, really uh, not a good situation. And um, my grandpa, who I was very close to, my grandpa Holberson, um, took me out and sat me down on a bench outside and just said, Eric, I don't ever want to be in a place like that. And he was having some health difficulties at the time. So, you know, really, really hit me. I didn't want him to be either. And um, it always gets me a little bit emotional, but he died a couple years later and after having a stroke. And I just always thought that, and he died in the hospital. I think he, he didn't want to go to someplace like that. And that just really struck with me. And um, I, I sort of decided that I wanted to be able to make a difference about that. And so fast forward, many, many years. And I, I had heard about the Mustard Seed Project from uh, actually the architect for the project, Steve Rice at Rice Fergus Miller. When I was still at, um, I was at Harmony Hill previously, I was the executive director there, um, which is a retreat center here in Union that um, serves people with a cancer diagnosis and their families. And so we were talking and he told me about the Mustard Seed Project and this innovative um, uh, program that they were developing and that they were building supportive senior housing, but not conventional uh, housing like a nursing home or an institutional kind of a facility, but based on the greenhouse project model, which I had not heard about at that point. Um, it's uh, if you if you're interested, you know, you can just Google greenhouse project, but it's a uh, it's a different model of senior care that um, prioritizes. Uh, making the, where, where people live more like a home, you know, a group home as opposed to a, uh, a institutional kind of a facility. Um, 
And it's all about small scale, um, more, more small scale buildings, no long corridors, um, more independence, um, and less specializing in terms of the, the, the care givers. Uh, the, the whole model is about, um, for the staffing model is people are more generalists and less specialists. So we will have a nurse at our, at our homes, but um, not 24 hour care. And then the nurses aides are actually called, um, it's a Arabic word, um, it means general caregiver and it's Shabazin. So the, those workers not only do all the help residents with their, their daily activities, but then do the, the cooking. And there's a common hearth area in each of the homes. So it's three, 10 studio unit homes. And um, basically that, I'll just summarize, that model um, has been around since the 90s, um, was started by a nursing home administrator who, who I think had a similar realization to what I did when I was much younger in terms of we, are not, we weren't taking the, the proper kind of care for our elders that we should. And so he developed this greenhouse project model, which prioritized um, well-being for seniors and independence and just centered on the residents. Um, and it's led to much better outcomes, not just for the, excuse me, the residents, but for the, uh, for the staff. They have um, much better staff retention, satisfaction rates. Um, greenhouse project homes use generally less medication for their residents than nursing homes and other facilities like that. Um, and then during the pandemic, um, that model has um, done much better in terms of infection control um, and outcomes because it's more, um, it's smaller scale. For example, our facility um, with the studio apartments has it, each room will be, uh, has its own uh, ventilation system that removes the air from the room through the ceiling. So if somebody does get sick, they can be isolated pretty easily. So all those things, um, we're really excited to be bringing um, to our homes in Key Center um, will be the first one in Western Washington. There are more of these in um, the East Coast and um, quite a few in Colorado, but I think we're only the second um, in Washington State, the first assisted living greenhouse project. So excited about that. Um, actually, I think maybe I'll just show you um, a picture of the, the project, if that's okay. Um, this, if you can let me know if you see it, this is the mud pit that it was in um, December. Can you see that? Yes. So you can see the mud pit uh, and uh, you know the torrential rain we had in November and December, um, but we got through it and, and I'll show you a picture where we've, we've made progress, but you can kind of get a sense of a site here. Um, this where my, my little arrow is, is our, our senior center, the Crandall Center. And then um, this whole thing will be, um, actually the, the building starts about here and goes over to here. And the whole area there um, on the left side of the screen and then over here, is what will be our campus. Um, so uh, residents will be able to um, cross the, the road. And I'm gonna show you another picture here. Um, and uh, come across the, and for programs in the afternoon, um, we're also gonna be uh, putting in raised garden beds in this area where the, the hand is. And a greenhouse somewhere in there, we have to figure out exactly where, but. A, definitely gonna put a greenhouse there. Over here will be um, an orchard and this will be a pond in this area. Um, and then, whoops, uh, up on, this is actually a slope up here behind where we're gonna be ha have paths all around here um, as well as a little outdoor performance space. And um, one of the things that we're excited about too um, is an outdoor playground. Um, which is an adult outdoor playground. I mean, kids could play on it too, but it's just designed for, for the residents. Um, and it's a, it's a way of staying fit, having fun, connecting, you know, grandkids can come out and play in there too. So um, that's another exciting thing.
that uh, that that we're doing. Uh, two, questions, uh, two questions for you. Yes, go ahead. One is how is the state funded? And the second one is uh, how many residents total over the yeah. Yeah, um, it's funded through a pretty uh, complicated, but um, really, well, it's a, a diverse array of funding, but the, the, the construction loan is guaranteed by the United States Department of Agriculture. So we're actually getting the loan from Columbia Bank for $7.8 million, but then the USDA takes it out when we're done. So that, um, that's the way they, that works. But the, and then we've raised 5.6 million, that's the other part of it. So total project is almost 14 million. Um, and that 5.6 million um, donors, a lot of individual donors, um, foundation support, um, a lot of local foundations have, have chipped in the Cheney Foundation, Greater Tacoma Community Foundation, the William A. Looney Foundation, there are many um, foundations. Um, also government, um, the State Department of Commerce um, has given us two grants one to get started, um, half a million dollars for pre-development planning, you know, to pay the architect to get to get the plans started and all that stuff. And then another award to for construction of a million. Um, and then Pierce County has been very supportive. Um, we've received um, just under 900,000 from Pierce County Human Services. That is um, actually a part of their affordable housing program. One of the aspects of this project is that 30% um, of the beds um, will be for low income people. So below um, the 50% or below the local area medium income. So basically Medicaid qualified people. So we'll have out of the 30 um, a studio apartments, that's the total number, um, eight to 10 of them on average will be Medicaid eligible. So that's something we're also really excited about. That's, I've learned about this. It's very hard to find a, a good Medicaid bed. I mean, it's almost impossible in some, for some people. So we won't solve the problem with this, but at least we'll be able to have, to add a few, you know, eight to 10 of those beds. Um, and like I said, I think two of the homes, so 20 of the studio apartments, will be um, assisted living, and then one of them will be memory care. Um, so total of 30 with those uh, Medicaid beds. We're also looking, we've, we've received a gift recently um, of $750,000 to, to start a, what we're calling a benevolence fund because um, you know if people come in able to pay the full price, but then spend down their assets, and if there's if all the Medicaid beds are full, we don't want to you know make that person leave. That's just not what we want to do. So we're creating this uh, fund that will hopefully tide people from being able to pay privately to Medicaid until they're able to to get a Medicaid eligible bed. So those are the things we're looking at now. As a nonprofit, we're not in this to make. Uh, money, we're in it to, to help people and to serve our mission. So we have to be able to pay the bills, but it's not about making a profit. So does that answer? Go ahead. Uh, question. Uh, are you building green? Is it uh, definitely green? Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. It's not, we weren't able to, we didn't have enough of a budget to do LEED certified, you know, which I would have loved to do, but it's a by the evergreen standard, you know, the Washington state evergreen standard. So we're, we are meeting that, that. And we're also, we didn't have the money in the original budget to, um, to put solar panels on the roof, but I'm really hoping we can do that over the next, we can add those on. Um, we do have, we did recently get a gift to put solar panels on the roof of the panel center, the senior center. Um, it's a big area there and I'm all about, um, those kinds of projects, I get really interested in that kind of thing. So we're we're going to be adding some green aspects over time, and really want to work with the community to make that campus, which you know kind of looked like a mud pit when you saw it there, but um, into a, a green park area um, with lots of um, vegetables growing, so we can use those in the kitchens um, for the residents. 
other questions right now. A Monday question. <laughs> What's that? Oh, this is a Monday question. What is your source of heat? Oh, for the for the building? Um, it's a heat pump, you know, it's a regular heat pump. Um, so yeah. So you know, with uh does that make sense? And then each of the, the homes as well has a um, there's a common kitchen and residents will be encouraged if they want to, to use the common kitchen to make cookies or help with the meals. And then there's a, a little uh, fireplace in each of those, not a, not a wood burning, but a, you know, a, a, a hearth electric. So um, that'll serve as sort of the center of each of the, the three homes. Um, and then right next to, to, to us too is Food Backpacks for Kids, which does really great things in the community. We actually, there's a little building off to the side there that we rent to them. They're also developing um, some garden beds and we're hoping that was just talking to the leadership there um, once we're up and running, which we expect to open in November of this year. We wanna um, get residents involved with volunteering with them and I, I just think it could be really um, a great community um, area up there, which Key Center needs. There isn't a real park there in Key Center. Um, so we're excited about that. Pardon? Could a married couple live? Oh, yes. Yeah, there, there are a couple of the rooms um, that we can take down a partition to make it into a room for a couple. Um, so we expect we'll be doing that. We don't know how many couples will have like that, but yeah, we can do that. So that's a, that's a nice aspect of it too. Um, Neil, D, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you're speaking of uh, uh, the, uh, must see the Crandall building as being kind of a community center. Would you mm -hmm. speak more about that aspect? Yeah. So um, we the our our building is used to be a restaurant. Um, you, some of you may know that, and um, it has a at the center a commercial kitchen. Um, we've now it's taken a couple of years, but we've gotten that all refurbished and cleaned and ready to go. Um, within the next week or so, I'm going to be starting to advertise for a kitchen manager to get the get it up and running, and. Um, that's going to be at the heart of the building. Um, we want to develop congregant meal programs, um, uh, cooking class programs, um, lots of programs that'll involve the residents across the street to come over in the afternoon. We'll, we'll have activity hours every day there. Um, and we currently have, and we'll be expanding um, a range of programming there. Like I mentioned earlier, sale, yoga, Tai Chi, um, art classes, um, painting classes, things like that, um, games, you know, all, all sorts of activities for people to drop in in the afternoon from the community and also residents to come across from the assisted living homes to, to you know, get some interaction with other members of the community. Um, we're envisioning uh, intergenerational programs. One of our partners is Peninsula Hands-On Art, who rents a building from us in the lower floor. So art projects with kids and seniors, um, you know, those intergenerational kinds of things. Um, we also um, now have a liquor endorsement on our, um, on our business license. So we'll be able to do like a, a paint, you know, painting class with a glass of wine. Um, which would be really nice. We're looking forward to all this. You know, it's been a long time here in the pandemic where we haven't been able to do that kind of stuff or have had to have done it and then had to suspend classes again. So um, we just, what I'm, what we're envisioning is sort of a, a hub of community activity there um, at the Crandall Center with assisted living residents, you know, joining in, um, which I think will bring really, bring really big benefits to them and to the rest of the community, as opposed to the previous situation where people had to go somewhere else, you know, um, outside of the community. Does that kind of get it? Neil, why don't you talk a little bit too about um, what you do and your perspective? That would be really great. So uh, um, 20 years ago, uh, 
was taking more than who recruited me because I was at that point considering retirement and with my professional background, she thought I would be a good fit for the uh, information desk. So that's how I got involved. At the time, uh, uh, the master seat was still in the building right next to the library. So I've seen a lot of changes with the master seat over the last 15 years. So besides being on the information desk, uh, I deliver uh, lunches twice a week. Um, for years, I also uh, drove people to their appointments or to the grocery store or wherever they needed to go. And that was a very interesting experience uh, because I met people, people who lived in the community for years and years. Other people, uh, for example, I can't think of what is that community there off Lake Chelan? The uh, Holden. Holden. She oh, actually yeah. grew up in Holden, in Holden Village and uh, while I was working at the mine there. So now I've had made, I made those kinds of uh, connections. Um, the, uh, the third thing that I do is I'm uh, officially trained. Uh, by the uh, Office of the uh, uh, State Insurance Commissioner of being a uh, Medicare counselor. Uh, I'm one of uh, two people on the Key, on the Key Peninsula who, who does that. Then we are tied in with uh, Sam Outreach, who, who uh, is the, uh, the administrator for all the Chica volunteers here. Uh, in Pierce County. So that's a big part of it. Um, as of uh, two, three months ago, uh, there has been a, and there still is, a uh, intern social worker with the name of uh, Jason. Uh, very nice guy. And he promotes the idea of people walking. And as many of you know, I do that every, anyway, but. Uh, <laughs> um, so he started the walking group uh, every Monday, uh, regardless of the weather. Unfortunately, from my perspective, not enough people show up for whatever reason. But if you have never been to uh, the Gateway Park or to uh, the 360 Trail Park, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, perhaps not on a summer weekend because it gets busy with mountain bikers. But it's a nice park, nice walking park, the easy walking trails, as well as more challenging. So anyway, he is promoting the idea of people uh, getting out to walk. And hopefully once his internship uh, comes to an end and he leaves, then we're able to continue with this, this uh, walking group at least once a week. Great. Thank you, Neil. I mean, you, you do so much good work Really appreciate it. And I want actually, I want to show share my screen one more time and um, um, I'll show you. Um, here we go. This is uh, our, we every year we have a Santa for Seniors um, program in December. It's uh, funded by the Looney Foundation and it's all about making sure that seniors are, are have some Christmas cheer. And so this is our staff here. Our Jason is the Grinch. That's, that's him right there, our social worker. Um, that Neil was just talking about, and the rest of our staff, Marion, Julie, Jen. Are, so Marion's our development coordinator. Julie is um, our administrative and program assistant. Um, Jen is our transportation manager. Um, Jason, our social worker intern. Um, Maureen, our operations director, and Anne, our um, bookkeeper admin assistant. But I'll just show you some pictures here from Christmas. Um, we had Santa and Mrs. Santa. Uh, just the best, and um, people came up, and we we gave them a, a meal um, catered by Laura's Leg Armash and Port Orchard, and um, and then one of the, personally my one of my favorite parts was the caroling because you know during the pandemic we haven't had much chance to sing, and I love to sing, so we we did that in the lobby with the South Sound Strummers. That's this group here; they're great, and um, just a lot of fun. And looking forward to doing more stuff like that. We do that every year, every Christmas, and then we're going to be adding a summer program either this year or next year. So we'll have two of those annual events. Well, and, in fact, go ahead. In the 
fast we actually have the, the Christmas party or whatever uh, in the building. Yes, and yes. We'll uh, have the meals together uh, inside the building. Again, Christmas caroling, that sort of thing. Yeah. Due to the pandemic, of course, you have to adapt so people go drive up and receive their right. Food. Right. So next year, we are hoping that everybody will be able to sit down and have a meal together and we'll probably be more than one sitting because and we'll also be involving the um, the new homes across the road too. hopefully this next year. So and it's interesting that you mentioned the Holden Village, Neil, that's actually how I graduated from St. Olaf College in 1987 and I had a friend who was uh, working there as the he was the village musician at the time. And um, that was actually my, my stepping stone to living out here in Washington. And I went from St. Olaf to, to Holden Village and then, um, then moved out here. So um, a lot of connections there. So other, other questions? Yes. Do you have a, late, a, a waiting list for your buildings to be completed? Right now, um, we have an interest list. So if you if you know someone who might be I would like to know my name. <laughs> okay. I, I was walking distance from what is happening here, and I've been in and out. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's, but I at this at some point, uh, I, you know, it's just I think I think you're going to be um, people are you're going to have way too many people that want to come in, and 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 you know, there will be so many places. Yeah, I, I do think, you know, it's the, if, if, if I want, if someone I loved needed supportive care or if I needed it, that's where I'd want to go, so, um, kind of place like that. So um, you can find what I would call us at the office. So you can get, um, I can give you the phone number now, but um, the mustardseedproject.org is our website. And Neil can probably point you in the uh, right direction. Neil and I are friends. We've done okay. together. So okay, I, yeah. I can ask Neil, yeah. But yeah, but get your name on the interest list. And then our, um, so our operating partner is Concepts and Community Living. They'll be managing the homes, um, you know, because I don't know how to do that. That's not my area. So um, they are, they operate assisted living homes in Oregon and Washington. They have a great track record. Um, if you've ever heard of the book Being Mortal, um, but um, I would recommend reading that. It, it, um, it talks about both the greenhouse project and concepts of community living, both were sort of pioneers in developing a different method of, of helping support seniors and with support of housing. Um, but anyway, they'll be our managing partner and they will be starting to formally market and get people to sign up for spaces probably in April or May coming up, but we're not quite there yet. Um, one of the things that uh, we're Putting it, we just put out to the community a, a request for ideas for names. What are we going to call this? You know, we don't have a, a name for the homes yet. So, um, and one of the reasons we need that is um, so that we can actually really start to sign people up for places and, you know, all those things. But for now, uh, get your name on the interest list and then we'll keep you informed about how that goes. Thank you for all that you do. It's oh, thank you. I love doing it. Do you have a need for more volunteers? Yes, I was just going to say. I thank you, Neil, for that for that uh, prompt. We do. Um, was that a question there too? No. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need volunteers. we we need drivers, as Neil knows. Um, that's one of the biggest needs right now. Um, we need help with the yard care program, which is going to be starting up again now that, well, once we get past this cold weather, hopefully we'll be, we'll be back into that in March, April, we'll be doing that. And there's always um, a lot of demand for that, especially after this winter, you know, with the snowstorm we had earlier this winter with all the debris, it's going to be a big cleanup. So, um, you know, a, a group of volunteers or, or individual volunteers are very needed for that. Um, and then soon we'll be, you know, pending how, how COVID does here, I'm hopeful right now, but we'll be starting um, activity hours again, drop in activity hours at our Crandall Center building and we'll need help um, with from people to help, you know, 
play games, you know, activities, create activities, that those kinds of things. Um, if you have a professional background that you think might be helpful for us, you know, you could uh, sign up for a Kasich um, spot like Neil does. Um, right now we have uh, four really active uh, Kasich volunteers, Neil, as well as um, Mary Kogu, who's a retired attorney. Um, and then Ray Steiner, who's uh, retired. Um, he taught, um, he's a pharmacist who taught at the UW School of Medicine. And um, Tony um, Trotter, who's a board member and who is just excellent in terms of research and his knowledge about resources. Um, so we could always use more people for the, for the Kasich desk. Um, but I would suggest if you're interested, just, just call us and um, there's a whole variety of things that we can connect you with, including office help, um, you know, lots of different things. And for our events, we always need um, people too. We actually have a, our annual fundraising event. We're hoping to be in person for the first time since 2019. Um, we'll be coming up in the first week of June. We always need volunteers for that. And that's a really good way um, to sort of get to know the, the mustard seed family community um, too. So Neil, do you, can you think of other things that um, volunteer things that I haven't said? I think that's about it. But that, the other thing I want to add is early during the uh, pandemic, uh, it was really difficult for people to get to the grocery stores. People were afraid to go to the grocery stores. Right. One of the great programs you, uh, you provided, and I think was funded through some nonprofit, People could drive up on, I think, on Fridays, and they they received a bag of groceries, or, or I should say, uh, vegetables and fresh fruit, which was a great great program. Yes, yeah, that was that was funded by the CARES Act, and there were several things. There was a bag of groceries. There was like a pandemic supply kit, you know, with PPE and things like that. And then there was a weekly produce. Um, delivery that was probably the most successful that was um, that was set up by Pierce County with local organic farmers so all the produce came from local Pierce County um, farmers and um, every week they throw together a bag of really hot top quality stuff with some recipe ideas and that was like over I think it was over 100 people every week for months um, and it was great I wish we could start it up again maybe we can um, but it, it was really a, a great program. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, we have these uh, community forums. So, oh, actually that's another thing. If you're interested in, in what we do, um, if you're on Facebook, um, we have a Facebook page. I liked yours today, so you can like ours too. You can, <laughs> the Mustard Seed Project, like our page. Um, there's a lot of good, uh, every day there's uh, information coming out on that. Um, and then also uh, we have a monthly e-news um, blast that we send out that talks about programs that we do. You can um, sign up for that on our website. Um, if you go to the mustardseedproject.org um, and then go to news and at the bottom, you can sign up uh, there for, for those newsletters. Um, and and there, that's also where our phone number and other, and our calendar too. We have a, a calendar that shows all the upcoming uh, community forums and classes that's starting to, to fill in again now that we're, we, we did have to, um, I think it's been four weeks now that we've suspended classes because of the Omicron surge, um, but we're opening up again this Tuesday um, for uh, sale yoga and Tai Chi and drop-ins with masks and, you know, the, all the usual procedures, but, um, but we're glad to be able to to, to open those up again and hopefully get back um, to more norm, some kind of normalcy there. Um, other, go ahead. I was just gonna thank you so much for coming and sharing with us this morning because it's wonderful, uh, an amazing program. I hope you come back in the fall after you're opened and share again with us how you're doing and what maybe we as a congregation can help you with. Um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I would love that and uh, would love to keep you posted um, on how things develop. And yeah, please do, um, if you're interested, sign up um, on Facebook and e news, and we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted as, as things go.
Thank you all. Really appreciate it. Is there anything else, George? Anybody have something else? I guess quick question, what about pricing structure for these? How is that being developed for people to make it affordable too? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. You know, we have a we have a, a pro forma model actually that 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 all of that has to be we had to qualify for the USDA funding. We had to show a 35 year model of how it would all work financially. So um, in that model, our wage rates and rates for residents to be really transparent and honest, we're going to have to revise those because the um, the. Uh, the labor market has completely changed in the last year and a half, two years with uh, how much people um, need to be paid to do the work um, in, you know, in caregiver work. Um, it's all changed. So we're gonna be revising um, the wage rates in the model as well as the, how much we're gonna charge people. That'll all be done by the time, that's one of the things we need to do before we sign people up. But our, um, real commitment is to keep that as low as we possibly can because we are not motivated by the profit margin. We're just, we just have to make it the budget balance. So we're gonna keep that price as low as we can. Um, in the current model, it's um, between four and 4,500 a month, depending on levels of care. But I think that's gonna go up a bit. Um, it's to me, I, I think, you know, I'm going to express an opinion here. I think we all, we need a little bit more um, uh, government support. Everybody who's in the business of assisted living, um, I think, unless you're catering to a, um, a clientele that has a lot of money, it's very difficult um, to make the budget balance. As a nonprofit, I think we have a, a really good opportunity here to explore um, a way of developing a model that reduces the impact on residents. And, um, you know, we can raise funds from foundations and individuals to help support people. That's our intention. Um, but we do have to make the budget balance. So that's one of our uh, pieces of work coming up is, um, is publishing those rates and, you know, keeping them as low and as affordable as we can. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. So if you're asking for um, $4,000 to $5,000 $5 per month, is there a, a fee to gain entry like some places have? Um, that's that's going to be concepts and community living or operating partner will do that. There, I, I don't, there isn't like, um, you know, the, the higher end places that <clears throat> require you to put down a, you know, huge amount. I don't, I haven't, I don't think there is going to be a um, large initial, there will be somewhat of, the, of a deposit to reserve a space, but it's not going to be anything more than uh, five or $10,000. I don't think, you know, like a month or two of rent. Um, it's not a big buy-in as with other facilities, but I will keep you posted on that as we develop those rates. I hope I didn't just say anything wrong there, but we don't want it, that to be a barrier for entry at all, because that's what that is if you require a large initial payment, I think. Um, and then, like I said, from the very beginning, eight, an average of 30% of our beds, so that's nine out of 30, um, would be Medicaid eligible. And that's a requirement of that Pierce County funding, which we're happy to meet. So those will probably fill up very quickly, and then um, we'll we'll have to um, work on filling up the rest. But I don't like I don't think that's going to take too long. Um, so I've got a uh, disgusting technical question. Um, <laughs> how are you doing your sewer and septic system? Ah, that's oh we've we've talked a lot about that. Yeah, it's it's uh, we don't have a community you know, <clears throat> septic, municipal septic system in Key Center. So we've had the, the slope I showed you earlier in that picture um, is where the drain fields are gonna be, three drain fields up on the slope there. Um, and uh, they're designed with lots of redundancy in them. Um, we had to put a curtain drain at the top and at the bottom to protect it from groundwater flow. Um, and we, we designed it, our designer designed it with uh, the residents in mind, because the people who live there are gonna be on medication more than your average person. Medication can impact drain fields. So we've designed them with that in mind. 
Um, and then water is provided by a uh, pin light there. There's a water tank right there. So that, that we have, we don't have a well, but the, we did have to do drain fields there. Anything else? That looks like it is. Yeah, thank you, Eric, very much. For thank you. <laughs> really appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. You can help you see if you see these people out there. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Thank you.